Amen. Amen. I think the Lord's like Eli like Elijah was making fun of the the prophets. I think I think the Lord's sleeping. You think so? You might be sleeping, bro. You might be on vacation. <laughs> I think the Lord went on vacation, huh? Go ahead, brother. Yes, you Praise the Lord. And we got filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you guys hear that or no? Yeah. Two people got filled with the Holy Ghost on PCC campus. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? That's good. That's good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Ghost will, will change him, that's for sure. Um, I want to talk about the mercy of God, God uh, uh, mercy of God tonight. Um, I kind of got a bunch of scriptures and different things like that. I, 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 I don't know the way the Lord wants to move tonight, so I'm going to pray, and then we're going to read uh, tonight some scriptures, amen. But we're going to talk about the mercy of God. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you, Father, for the holy word tonight. Father, we pray that as we read this word and study your word, that, Father, Lord, we would be changed, that you would fill us, Father, with faith tonight. I think some of us in here are lacking faith, God. Father, tonight we need faith to receive from your word. We need faith to receive a healing. We need faith, Father, to receive blessings. Father, we need faith to fill these seats. Father, you said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, Father, tonight, bless this time, Lord. Holy Spirit, open our hearts tonight to receive. Open our minds, Father, to comprehend the Word of God tonight, God. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I want somebody real quick to read me a scripture. We read it uh, Sunday, I think, but I want to read it one more time. Through, uh, Exodus 3, verse 6 through 10. Somebody grab that real quick. Exodus 3. 6 through 10. Remember when uh, uh, Moses uh, went to the burning bush? He seen a burning bush in the middle of nowhere. And he went up to it and God began to speak to Moses and told him, you know what? Uh, uh, as he turned to look at the fire that would, wasn't being consumed or the bush that wasn't being consumed by fire, God told him, take your shoes off for where you're standing is holy ground. And God began to s speak to him. By, by, you know, by, by his mercy, he began to speak to him and watch kind of what, the, the, what he says to his people. Who has it tonight? Who wants to read tonight? Sister Mary, Exodus 3, what did I say? Verses 6 through 10. Six through 10. Go ahead. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses, I am the God of your Then the Lord told him, I have seen the deep sorrows of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their pleas for freedom from their harsh aspects. I have come to deliver them from the Egyptians and to take them out of Egypt into a good land, a large land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hercites, Hagatites, and Jebusites have lived. Yes. The wail of the people of Israel has, has risen to me in heaven, and I have seen the heavy tasks the Egyptians have oppressed in them. Now I am going to send you to Pharaoh to demand and let you be my people out of Egypt. Amen. That's, that's good stuff right there. You know you know why? Because God's seen the oppression of his people. How many think today, with everything that's going on uh, in the world, with, with, the, with the, you know, man, let me just tell you about today. Today I went and, and, I, and I sat with a friend of mine who just had back surgery. And, uh, you know, he could barely walk, leg, can you feel it? It fell the other day. 
hurt his face and everything, and 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 just just laying in bed, discouraged. Uh, you know, what I mean, my age. You with me? And I'm walking around. You know, what I mean, thanking God every day. You know, what I mean that 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 God keeps me healthy. And 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 he's telling me about his aunt who just he just got a call of his. Uh, his mother died, and his aunt, who he loves dearly, had a massive heart attack just today. And they flew her for fight for life to Amarillo, Texas, to try and save her life. And 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 you know what I mean? And 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 and, and you know what I mean? And oh, oh man, I'm trying to think right now that I mean I oh, oh uh, and and um, Julio came in and told me he says, Pastor, I just found out why one of my friends and a friend of mine that I know my age went to school with. Julio's a young man. He said, man, my friend just hung himself yesterday. He killed himself. And all this stuff is happening. This is all just in a matter of one day. And that yesterday, my wife has the, she had the uh, CB, CNN and all this stuff. And all they were talking about was this e Ebola. Ebola? Ebola? Yeah. That's breaking out. I mean, that came into the U.S. in a plane. and. And 130 people are infected, and one person who touches one thing infects everybody. That, and 130 times all that, uh, you know what I mean? And all this stuff, and it's like, wow. That's scary right there. There's a movie that we have, we watch, somebody lent it to us, or we borrowed it, or something called Contagion. And it's, and it's, it's a story like that of somebody who came from China or somewhere and had something... Uh, some disease that spread like wildfire. They touched the railing on a plane or something, or a cocktail in a bar or something. I don't remember. And and it just, I mean, everybody was getting it. The whole United States was. You know, you ever seen the movie? Anybody? Man. It, it's it's crazy. And I mean, something like that ought to put the fear of God in you. It ought to. I mean, you know, because obviously our preaching don't. So maybe if you're afraid to get sick from something like that, maybe that ought to put the fear of God in you. Come on now. Yeah. To the point where you're saying, man, I better get it together around here, man. You with me? I mean, it, it's, it's crazy, but so much stuff's going on. So many things happening just in the last 24 hours. It's like, wow, that's heavy duty. You with me? That's heavy duty. And, 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 and you know what I mean? And... and you know, we're, we're, we're over here trying to, you know, skate by serving the Lord, you know what I mean? As do as little bit as possible, but really just trying to stay, on the, stay in there with the Lord. And it's like, man, we're not going to make it like that. I mean, you know, we got to, we got to get in there, man. You with me? We got to get in there. We got to serve the Lord. And we got to understand. But God's seen the oppression of his people. Because God's seeing all this stuff happen. God's seeing the Colorado prison systems at 35, 36,000 men, I think. Maybe I'm way off, but I could, could as well, Oscar said, 36,000 men in Colorado, or, and, and I think and women are in prison today. 36,000 of them. How many of you got somebody in prison tonight? Anybody? Let me see your hand if you, got, you know somebody or you got a relative in prison. Amen, and 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 or somebody in the county jail, and and you know what I mean, and all that stuff, you know what I mean, and and you're seeing them, and it's like they don't have no control. Have you seen anybody on that new uh, crocodile drug? Yeah. If you haven't, YouTube it or Google it. I mean, and watch that crocodile stuff and see what it's doing. Do you think God gets pleasure and glory in somebody's complete arm eaten from that stuff? You know, it makes God happy, and like, ah, that's a curse on you. I'm going to show you. You should have served me. No. You think God's sitting up there like that? No. You don't think God loves that individual and is crying and weeping for them and saying, what is my church doing? Oh, I don't know if I got time to go to prayer. Did you see the, how did it say, oxymoron in that? You with me? It's like we don't have time to, to serve the Lord and do what God called us to do, but the world's dying and going to hell. But I thank God for Him. Because He's the one that's seen the oppression of His people. He's seen the Amorites and the, and the Hivites and all these people, but He's seen the Egyptians and Pharaoh 
destroying his people and killing them and beating them and, 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 and causing them to hunger. And listen, God, the reason they were there is because God's the one that sent them there. You, you with me? The reason they were in bondage for 400 years was because they sinned against the Lord. You with me? And even if you've sinned against the Lord and done wrong, He may, He said His anger only lasts for a moment, but His mercy endures forever. You, Think about it. Amen. Come on now. His anger burns just for a moment, but His mercy endures forever. And, you know, you know what I mean? And for 400 years, he's seen me, he's a man, you know. You know, after a while, he's like, man, I, I need to do something for my babies over there. They're being beat up. Enough is enough. He told him in Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, the first chapter where he said, dude, how many, ro how many rods have I beat you with? How long have I bruised you? And you still don't learn. You with me? I don't know if you guys have ever had a child like that, or maybe you've had, you have a child like that where you spank them and they just still don't learn. I mean, they're just stubborn, boy. They're just, come on now. I had one like that. I mean, my, man, I spank her butt. One time I had a paddle and I broke, I hit her so hard that the paddle broke. And she would tell me, give me another one. And I'm telling you what, man, it was like scary for me because I didn't want to be angry and hurt my own child. And it's like, when are you going to learn? Come on now, that's your baby. You love that child. And yet the bruising and the spanking and the discipline is still not working. And God said, I've beaten you like a fool. Like a, they, they beat the fools with a rod and they still don't learn. And God's like, dude, listen, man. Can we come to an agreement? Can we just uh, can we make a compromise here? Let's agree together. You with me? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He said, "Man, listen. If your sins are scarlet, I'll make it white as snow. If it's red like crimson, I'll make it white as wool." He said, "Come, let's reason together. Let's. God's even willing to compromise." He's like, "I don't want to beat you anymore." With you, you with me? You think God wants to smite the United States with a curse? Make everybody die and all this stuff so that they could eventually serve him. Remember, we learned the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You with me? And it's like, you know what I mean? He, he seen me, he put him there, but for 400 years he watched him and he came, he had enough and he said, I'm going to do something about it and I'm going to raise up a man. Remember that. I am going to raise up a man. Right. To preach the good news to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, heal the brokenhearted. Come on now. Right. You with me? Right. I'm going to raise up a man, I'm going to raise up a woman that's going to go tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm raising up Moses, a, a type of Christ in the Old Testament, who is going to lead his people out of Egypt. Exodus is an exiting from, from that bondage and that slavery they were in. God said, I'm going to raise somebody up. Moses, are you willing to do this, man? I'll put my power in you. Just go for me. Set him free. Let's read another scripture about that one in Romans chapter 9, verse 15 through, through 18. Romans chapter 9, verse 15 through 18. Speaking of that same scripture there. Anybody got it? 9, 15 through 18. 15 through 18, Pastor? Yeah. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not, it does not, therefore, depend on a man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the Scripture says to Pharaoh, "I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth." Therefore, if God has mercy on whom He wants to have mercy, and He hardens whom He wants to harden. Wow. Do you know that God raised Pharaoh up for that very purpose? 
He raised him up to, to destroy him. Is that, it, it sounds kind of like contrary to God. But he's like, dude, I can do whatever I want to do. I'll raise up Moses to be the type of Christ to bring my people out. I'll raise up Pharaoh because he had to be raised up. Nobody in authority is ever there without God giving them that position. Remember that. Your boss is there. Your pastor is there. Your, the, the policeman is there because God let him be there. The jailer is there because God put him there. You with me? God set Pharaoh in position. He set him in that place of authority and raised him up and blessed the work of his hand. Everything he touched turned to gold. He had the Midas touch. Mm -hmm. Everything he said, they said that he was so powerful, brother, that the people on the earth called him God. Hmm? And God said, I raised him up just to blow him out. He said, I will have mercy on who I want to have mercy on. But why, why Manuel? Why, why save him? Why change him? Why not one of his homies over there and this and that? And God's like, because I will have mercy on who I want to have mercy on. Why Vince? Why Vince Diaz? Why him? Of all your friends, I was talking about him today. One of my buddies was saying all of them are all jacked up. They're drunks. They're on drugs. They're, they're, they're in prison. They're all messed up. But why me of all them men that God raised up like that? As God said it, I'll have mercy on who I have mercy on. He, he chooses who he wants to choose. You with me? God will forgive. Let me, give you a, let me give you the definition of mercy here. Let me see what this is here. I put uh, in the NIV uh, study Bible like you have, I think you have the blue one. The definition of mercy was kindness and forgiveness, especially when given to a person who doesn't deserve it. Kindness and forgiveness, amen, especially when it's given to a person who don't deserve it. Um, what is mercy, the mercy of God? I put a note here, it says, uh, the ready inclination of God to relieve the misery of fallen creation. The ready inclination of God to relieve the misery of the fallen creation. What is the difference between the mercy of, mercy of God and the grace of God? Mercy is not giving or not getting what you deserve. Amen? Let me think tonight some of you should have been in prison right now. I know, keep it quiet. I'm telling you, you didn't hear me. Come on now. Some of us, for what we did, should be in prison tonight. You know? and, and when I say that, I, I mean, a lot of times I think I, I speak to men, but I mean, we've had women in our church, brother, had they been found out, they'd be doing some time right now. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. You get the difference? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. What do you deserve tonight? What really do you deserve? What's the ultimate thing that you deserve tonight? Hell. 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 Gerald got me, man. Everybody else, I don't know. <laughs> it's getting what you don't, not getting, not getting what you don't deserve. Grace is getting what you don't, what you don't deserve. It's getting what? Mercy um, causes Let's see. Mercy cancels out um, punishment. Grace adds all spiritual blessing. Let me say it again. Mercy cancels out punishment. Grace adds all spiritual blessing. Amen. Mercy is God's... Um, Mercy is God's compassion extended to me, or to, to men, I'm sorry, in their misery. Mercy is God's compassion extended to men in their misery. That's what he just said in Exodus 3. I'm taking you out. And he said, I'm sending you to a land, a large land, a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Could you imagine if our city was so blessed? 
that we had milk coming down the Fountain Creek <laughs> and not poop. <laughs> and not only milk, but milk with honey in it. Man, that's like Willy Wonka's factory. Man, we had that chocolate river. Huh? And you can go up, you can drink of that. I mean, the, the cows are so full, the goats are so full of milk that the bee, the beehives are just dripping the trees with fruit and everything, just dripping the nectar. And everywhere you look, it's just so fertile and blessed. That's what God said he's going to take them out of bondage and give them that. Come on now. Grace is God's favor extended to men in their guilt. Huh. Let me say this again. Mercy is God's compassion extended to men in their misery. Grace is God's favor extended to men in their guilt. I mean, you know what I'm we, 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. Stand before God guilty tonight? And His grace, His favors on us? Don't make sense. I'll have mercy on who I said I'll have mercy. So what God said, how many of you, how many of you tonight, sometimes you struggle with you? You struggle with you. You with me? I, I, I mean, I, I do. You, you with me? The call of God on my life? Why He chose me of all these people? Why He forgave me? Why He didn't? And one, one, one young man stood up that was shot. His brother was shot and killed just like the way I was shot. And he, and he, and he, and he was angry and he was ranting and raving, saying, Why didn't God kill you? God should have spared my brother and should have killed you. And I was preaching, I was ministering to a bunch of youth. Do you imagine after that? Or how do I go on after that? I did. But it's like, man, you know, everybody's probably feeling bad looking, gee, what, you know, what's, what is he going to say? What is it? Man, and that guy stormed out screaming and crying and got like, wow. And I'm like, shh, wow, Lord, why did you spare me? You with me? How many of you have failed God? Uh, failed God. You let him down. You just flat out done denied him and the way you behaved. And yet you have to look at God and you have to say, God, you accept me? You've had, maybe you've had people push you away. People walk away from you. People say all manner of evil against you because of things you did. Not of things you didn't, you weren't guilty of, but of things you were guilty of. Come on now. And yet God's sitting there and he's like, I love you, man. I'm here. They, they walk out the door on you. God's like, I'm right here, man. I'm right here. I'm not leaving. I'm going to work this through. We're going to work this through together. I'm going to get you to the end of this. And you're like, God, I don't deserve this, Father. I don't deserve this. I don't. Come on now. Amen. Even though T.D. Jakes was preaching one time on TBN, and I remember it blew my mind. He was just sharing, you know what I mean, sitting there talking with the hosts. And, and he was like, you all know, out here, he says, you guys are out here watching us on TV. He says, you're looking at us, and you're waiting for us to fall. And he said, can I, can I tell you something? We've already fallen. You missed it. You with me? He said, we've already blown it. We've already messed up. You with me? And God has forgiven us, and God is restoring us, and God is building us up. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think that's the biggest problem with the, with the Christian people, is that you come to church, you with me? And, and, and you're trying to prove to everybody that you're perfect. Come on now. Walk in like, amen, praise God. <laughs> You're like slapping somebody like that. Amen. Not that you're not gonna supposed to have the victory, you're supposed to be, but you know what I mean. But 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 you know what I mean. When when you know serving the Lord, I told you it's one of the, one of the hardest things you're ever gonna do because it deals with you. And the, and and the biggest person you can talk about the pastor, you can talk about your sister or brother, you can talk about the leader, you can talk about everybody else, and 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 maybe you can be right and stuff like that. But the thing is, is that you have to live with the hypocrite. Come on now. You have to live with that hypocrite. You have to live with that one guy or that one lady that you know. You know you're not perfect. 
And why is it that when we go into churches, we, you know what I mean, we have a tendency to pretend like we're all that and a bag of chips and a Diet Coke. And you're not. I'm not. You with me? If anybody knows my faults and my failures, it's me. That's what's hard to live with. That's what's hard to, to continue, you know what I mean, and, and, and keep going when you know, you know what I mean, that you have struggled. I mean, it's one thing to look around, look at Corey, man. Look at, you know what? He does this. Man, you know what I mean? Look at that. Man, you know him too, man. You know, how many of you could do that? You could look around and pick stuff out on people. But the hardest thing is, is that you know you have to walk home. You know you have to drive home with that hypocrite. And that you know, you know, you can fool everybody else. I tell people that you can come to church and fool the pastor all you want. But you can't fool you. You with me? That's when the mercy of God comes in and changes you and helps you and accepts you. Just the way you are. And says, I'm going to help you. you know. He thought, I'm going to help you. And I'm going to be there for you. And even though everybody else would run out, I'd never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go to the end of the world with you. You with me? And, and, and I, you know what I mean? That's hard. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Have you ever struggled saying, God, why you love me? You know why? T.D. Jake said it last night. When a man hits his wife, when a man's angry at his wife, when a man's yelling and telling her that the dinner was cold, that this wasn't done right, that that wasn't, he said that same man is telling himself that. You love your, your wife as you love yourself. You with me? And when you don't love yourself and you hate yourself and you, you take it out on everybody else. Come on now. You start finding faults in everybody, and you know what's a trip? Like, this, is a, this will blow your mind, okay? This is a trip. That the stuff you can see in other people is the very stuff you struggle with. Amen. There's ladies that can walk around and say, look at that chick wearing a little mini skirt by showing half her knock on her, all the men, little cochina. Try it. And you know what? Probably really down deep in their heart, they're saying, I wish I could wear that skirt. I wish I looked good enough to, to wear that. Hmm? <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, it's heavy duty, bro. You start seeing yourself in all kinds of stuff. And I told you, the closer you get to him, the more you realize, yeah. The more you got to get in there and you realize, man, this ain't about me, is it? About me quoting the scripture, about me praying in tongues, and about me doing all this. It's about me depending on him. I need him. I need his mercy. I need his grace more than ever before. Uh, Andrea said it, I think, or my, 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 one of them said, they said that Hebrews 4.16, they said, Therefore let us approach, how do I say, therefore let us come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy to find and find grace to help us in our time of need. Stop it. Amen? To find mercy in our time of need. And I'm telling you, we need the Lord. We need God tonight. You with me? Because if not, you're going to abuse your spouse. If not, you're going to, you know what I mean? Your husband will never be good enough. Because you know you're not good enough. And you're going to take it out on him. You with me? And you're, you, you with me? Your parents will never be good enough. Your children will never be good enough. Everybody else, man, you could pinpoint, you could point at them, you could tell them all kinds of stuff and bad and this and that and how correct them and stuff, and you, but you can't do yourself. And that's the hard part about it. Then God, I'm desperate for you, man. Yeah. I need you, Lord. It's, it's, I'm telling you, man, you, you can fake the funk for so many months and so many years at church. You with me? But if you don't understand the mercy of God, that by, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> he's, he's, yeah. huh? It's, it's like, man, his forgiveness and his love and his, and his, his choosing of you? Why you? You ever thought of that? We're, we're so busy thinking, man, thank you, Jesus, I'm chosen by God. <laughs> you can go, you know what I mean? And God will let you go 40 years in the backside of a desert like Moses. We all forget that Moses for 40 years, I'm barely 48 years old. He's not even 40, right? Not 40 yet. These guys are still youngsters. Gerald's not even 40 yet. And for the first 40 years, could you imagine? Because I'm sure you guys, Ruben, Gerald, you guys look and you think, man, you know what I mean? You lived, you lived your life. You know what I mean? You're a man. You, but could you imagine for the first 40 years of your life, you were royalty? You, 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 you owned all the cattle on a thousand hills. Your papa was, they called it, the god of the earth. You lacked for nothing. You had servants. Uh, you rode chariots. Have you ever seen the, the what is it, uh, uh, the pharaoh, what is it, the cartoon? The, the, the prince of Egypt? You, you with me? I mean, I just have an imagination like that. I just... Guys are just making messes, breaking stuff, and they could do that. They could afford it. Forty years, he lived like a king. He was a king. After forty years, God stripped him of everything. He took it all, man. He said, "You know what? Go, go into the desert with nothing at all." And for forty years, he barely can eat. He barely had food. He, you know what I mean? And he was on the in, in the heat in the backside of a desert. You ever been in Phoenix? We came through needles. Uh, 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 at the high noon, man. My wife was so mad at Oscar because he didn't warn us about coming through needles at high noon, man. And we had a van that was overheating. Oh. <laughs> and man, our feet, we, was, we had no air in the van. It was an old van, so our feet were sticking to the floor. It was so hot. And man, it was like, how? We were just sweating. We were miserable. You know what I mean? But could you imagine that every day of your life, walking in the heat and your feet are burning? And you got a bunch of stinky sheep that don't want to listen. <laughs> Forty years of that mess. You know? In the midst of that. Remember I told you, in the midst of your hardships, God's always bringing a flower or some water, an oasis. You put him a beautiful wife, man, in the middle of nowhere, brother. You with me? Serve the Lord, he'll put you, he'll hook you up in the middle of nowhere at a, at a, at a, at a truck stop. <laughs> you met a wife, man, in the middle of nowhere. Started taking care of her father's sheep and became, you know what I mean? He got hooked up. In the middle of the desert, there was a flower there. Amen? Became his wife and they had children and God, after 40 years, pulled him out and said, now go follow me, go call Call him out, man. That's what he calls us to do. You with me? And all that stuff happened, you know what I mean, because of the mercy of God. That doesn't sound merciful to put him in the desert for 40 years, but he was training him. He was stripping him of Egypt. You with me? Some of us need to be stripped of our, of our, of our Egypt, man. What was your Egypt? You with me? It wasn't just the heroin. It wasn't just the pills. There was so much more than that. Come on now. You get kick heroin, you kick the pills, and then you got to deal with all the mess. That's the easy stuff. Come on now. Then you got to deal with the abuse as a child, with the neglect, with the name calling, with the, with, come on now, with the lack, with the, you know what I mean, family you came from, with the, all that stuff. You're like, oh my God, I don't want to deal with it. God will make you deal with it. He'll strip you of all that junk. He'll strip you of that mindset, of that attitude that your family had. You with me? That, 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 you know, poverty mentality. You want to sit around and ask everybody else to give you money? He'll say, get a job. Huh? He'll make you work. That's one thing about the Lord. He'll put you to work. You don't like lazy. You read the Proverbs, you're going to see in there, God would not bless a lazy man. He, he, he can't stand a lazy man. You with me? 
He wants you out there being productive. He wants you about his business, out there making money, doing something. You know what I mean? Something productive. He said, I'll bless the work of your hands. You with me? But if you don't make nothing, he ain't going to bless nothing. Right? He always gives you a job before he gives you a wife. Amen? But the mercy of God is heavy duty, man. I mean, it's... God called them out. He brought them out because of His mercy. They didn't deserve it, but they deserved to be beaten there. And we come from that lifestyle, maybe with them, uh, you know, getting beat up. You, you read in Proverbs chapter 30, I think it is, where it talked about the drunkard. You know what I mean? Drinking is not for, 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 for a, a king. What does He call you? Isn't it a king and a priest? Huh? He said drinking's not for you. You're not the way you used to be. You used to do that stuff. Remember God stripping you. You with me? He says when you were drunk, you got beat up, didn't even know it. You with me? They beat you, you just laughed. Didn't realize your face was bloody, your teeth were out, you were, you didn't even feel it. And you woke up and felt it. What happened to me? Give me another one. Like a man on a ship, just, oh, you ever have those? I had many of those. <laughs> I had many of those nights, man. Huh? And the mercy of God forgave me. The mercy of God set me free. The mercy of God saved my life. You with me? The mercy of God heals. Amen. In, 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 uh, let's see, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 and 8, uh, Verse 14 through 18. Why don't you get that for me, Corey? Uh, Matthew 17, 14 through 18. Wait a minute. Don't everybody turn there because Brother Emmanuel, Matthew chapter 20, verse 30 through 34. You get it? Sister Mary Luke 1, 57 and 58. It's talking about uh, Elizabeth when she was a child. Brother uh, 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 Reuben, Philippians chapter 2. Verse 25 through 27. Sister Lucy, Titus 3, 4 through 11, or 4 through 7. Who else got the Bible? Who else wants to read? Yeah, you want to read? Uh, is that Destina? <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> that's Val. <laughs> uh, no offense. No. Uh, what did I tell you? I told you, Sister Lucy, Titus? Titus. <laughs> Uh, Valerie, 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Kayla, you got a Bible? Yes. 1 Peter 1 and verse 3. All right, who's first? Matthew 17, 14 through 18. This is the grace of God. Uh, let's see. The temporal, temporal mercy, I'm sorry, temporal mercy of God right here uh, in the area of deliverance. Go ahead. 14 through 18? Yeah. <clears throat> And when they approached the multitude, a man came up to him say, and, and kneeled before him and saying, Lord, do pity and mercy on my son, for he has epilepsy, and is moonstruck. He suffers terribly, for he frequently falls into the fire many times into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they were not able to cure him. And Jesus says, O oh, you unbelieving, warped, wayward, rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation, how long am I to remain with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. Amen. The mercy of God delivered this boy. Matthew 20, verse 30 through 34. <clears throat> Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, We want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed Him. They received their sight and followed Jesus. Have mercy on us, they said. Remember, mercy is giving you something you don't deserve. They might have known, man. You know what I mean? Maybe I, need, maybe I deserve to be blind. <laughs> huh? Maybe I deserve to be living the way I am. But Jesus, have mercy on me. 
You with me? And the mercy of God healed those men. The next one, uh, Luke 1, 57 and 58. By now Elizabeth's waiting was over, for the time had come for the baby to be born, and it was a boy. The word spread quickly to her neighbors and relatives of how kind the Lord had been to her, and everyone rejoiced. Okay, the King James says, and how merciful God has been to her to heal her barrenness. Did, can you understand this? <laughs> I don't know. Any of you got a, like a, your grandma, bro. You know what I mean? In her 60s, 70s. You know, I don't know how old was Elizabeth. I don't even remember at the time. But I think she was like a viejita, bro. And all them years she wanted a child. And, Ooh, she's mad. My years are past, bro. You know what I mean? But they served the Lord. Zachariah served God and honored God. And you know what he did? He, he helped with the church. He was faithful with the church, and he did what God asked him to do to help his church. And he was just serving and serving and serving. And I believe that Zacchaeus, Zachariah didn't even say out loud, God, give me a son. I believe God went in there and said, what is he saying? In his heart. Man, that'd be awesome to have a son. Man, it'd be bad. I mean, Lord, man, I know it may, it may be too late, Lord, but man, to have a son would be awesome, Lord. And God, and, and God heard him. You with me? Even in his, even in his stubbornness, didn't want to. You know what I mean? He was like questioning God, and God shut his mouth up and didn't let him talk for what nine months. And, and at the end, he glorified God, and God said to to Elizabeth, he, the, the women said, "Wow." God has been so merciful to this woman, and they praise God. You with me? That's the mercy of God. Temporal. Tell me God don't care about your situation, even if it's physical. He cured, he cured a lunatic boy. He cured, he cured two blind men. You with me? A woman that was barren in her 70s or whatever gave her a baby? That, that don't even make sense. That's ridiculous. But God is able. He's faithful, and He's willing. Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 through 27. This is, a, what, what did I say, Epaphroditus? It's testimony. But I think it is necessary to send back to you, Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs, for, the longs of, for he longs for all of you, and his distress because you heard he was ill. Indeed he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on him, on me, to steer me sorrow upon sorrow. Amen. Epaphroditus was a servant of Paul. These people had sent him over there to go help his pastor. And he was over there serving him while he was there, he got sick, and he was near death, and he said, But God had mercy on him. So God does that. You with me? Did he deserve it? I mean, can you really say you deserve to be healed? Can you really say you deserve the car you drive or the job you have or the kids you have? Do you really deserve that? You don't. We None of us do. You with me? How many you deserve? To, you know what I mean? So much worse than what you have. And yet, you know what I mean? God is faithful. God is merciful. Amen? He's merciful. Then were the temporal uh, uh, mercies of God. These are the eternal mercies. Titus two, uh, 3, verse 4 through 7. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously, through, the Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Amen. 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 He saved us by His mercy. Amen. First Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the, good, the goodness of God. For the mercy of 
Is that 10? Uh, no, it's not number 9. Okay, go ahead. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. And once you have no identi uh, identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you receive no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Mm. Once you did receive that, how many of you without mercy of God in this life? And then, and then he saves you, and then he showed you his kindness and his mercy. Remember, kindness, forgiveness, that's the mercy of God. He showed that to you. But there was a time where, man, you lived a hard life. Amen? And, and then God come and interrupted your miserable life, and he showed you his mercy and his kindness and his favor. Amen? 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Begotten, begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ, from the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Amen. Abundant mercy. I wasn't just mercy. That's abundance. Amen. We talked about that Sunday. Abundance, yeah. amen, that God has is, is uh, what, what is it called? Extravagant. Yeah. Amen. Just massive of mercy that God, he saved us by. Amen. And the last one, I want Corey to read this one out of Luke 23 and verse 3 through 9, uh, 39 through 43, brother. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Because I wanted to show you, I wanted to give you like one last example of, I like showing you people, huh? You said 3, 23 to 39? Luke 23. Oh, 23. Verse 39 through 43. <clears throat> One of the criminals who was suspended kept up a railing at him, saying, Are you not the Christ, the Messiah? Rescue yourself and us from death. But the other one reproved him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing yourself are under the same sentence and condemnation and suffering the same penalty? And we indeed suffer it justly, receiving the due reward for our actions. But this man has done nothing out of the way, nothing strange or eccentric or perverse or unreasonable. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom of glory. And he answered him, truly I tell you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Mm. That's heavy duty right there. That's an amazing story about a thief on the cross who was sentenced. That. Could you imagine, brother, that day? You got sense and you're on your way, man. They done crucified you. You're just up there waiting to die. All of a sudden, man, you'd be like, man, this dude is the Christ that I'm next to here. And your partner over there, you know what I mean? Oh, they're talking smack to him. And you get so mad and mad, and you just, well, wow, shut your mouth. You rebuke him. Tell him, you know what, me and you deserve to be here. But this man, he's done nothing wrong. He said, man, you know what, Jesus? He said, when you, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus turned, man, and that's heavy duty. He said, bro, today you'll be with me in paradise. And that, could you imagine that new destiny? He's on his way to hell, already hung on the cross. Ah. No, There's no hope for that man at all, but Jesus was hanging right next to him. Man, what an awesome picture. Some of us are like that tonight. Some of us know you don't even know you were the thief on the cross. Jesus pulled you off that cross, man. Healed you up. Told you, run on, man. Tell them about my love. Tell them about my mercy on your life. Remember the centurion? Or I mean, I mean the, 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 the demon-possessed man? He told that man, after putting him in his right mind, the dude ran the, 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 the tombs crazy out of his mind, cutting himself all jacked up. Jesus, man, touched him. Healed and cast them demons out of him. And then when they came to him, they found him cold in his right mind, ready to serve God. That's right. And he became a preacher from that point on, man. So he just took one, one touch from God. Jeez. That man went back and preached. He didn't go to Bible college. <laughs> huh? He didn't go through all these classes and do this and that. Man, God just said, go, go tell him what I did for you. 
Tell them how merciful God has been on your life. You with me? And them are the kind of people that we are. You with me? God has he saved us from a mighty long way. Amen. He's had mercy. And see, we can't afford to be like everybody else. We can't afford to be like that. You know what I mean? Well, do I want you? Could you imagine that demon possessed man? Uh, I don't know. It's five. I'm kind of tired. I don't know if I'm going to go to prayer. Could you imagine? A thief on the cross, man. You know what I mean? God set him free, and he's like, well, I don't know if I want to go to church. Uh, who, who is the ones that? Who is the one that said that it, something happened, and they said then they followed him? I think you read it. Which story did you read? Men. Huh? The two blind men. The two blind men that said, and then once he healed them, then they followed him and went with them. Could you imagine that? They're like, nah, I don't. I think I'm gonna go home, bro. I got a 50-inch screen TV. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go watch TV, bro. I haven't seen TV ever. I just heard about it. But there's this game on, man. I gotta go home. I can't be following you, Jesus. Could you imagine? He said, man, you know when God touches your life. See, that's why sometimes we'll get into situations and areas where we just know, you know, it's a holy frustration. You know you shouldn't be there. You with me? And it's just God's way of telling you, you know what I mean? You're out of you're out of order. You with me? You're out of order. You should be over here. You should be doing this. You're like a fish out of water. One pastor, one time he put a he had a he had a youth we had a youth convention and he took a fish, bro, a big old fish, and he and he, he reached in, grabbed it, and he threw it on the table and he's preaching to us. He said, you know what it's like when you're messing with sin and doing stuff? And he and, and, and <laughs> Fitz is freaking out. He's falling all over the table, like, you know what I mean? Trying to grasp for air, you know, and all this stuff. And, and, and he's just preaching, preaching. We're like, hey, bro, put the fish back. I mean, hey, get the fish, man. You know, he, he took off preaching. That poor fish was floppy. And he'd come back and he'd be like, all right, you know. And he put him back in his water and he was fine, you know what I mean? Then you go do it again, and you take him out and put him there again. And he says, "That's uh, you're out of nature when you're sinning and doing it wrong. Are you with me? He said, that's like a fish being out of water. And that's, like, that's, an, that's, that's what an ungrateful person is like. You with me? It's when we don't come. See, he, he, had, he had mercy on ten lepers. You with me? Ten lepers, bro. I don't know if you know a leper. If you ever get a chance, go, go look it up. Google leprosy, look at videos on YouTube, and see if you can find what leprosy really is, and see if you can find a condition, kind of like crocodile stuff, literally. And they all came to him, and they were crying. They were outcasts, bro. They didn't even get to come in the city. They didn't get to see their mom. They didn't get to have dinner with their family. They didn't know Thanksgiving. They're out there eating scraps and trash. And when God, you know what I mean, Jesus came by and had mercy, and they cried out to him. They said, man, mercy, Jesus. Heal us, please, cleanse us from this. And Jesus, you know what I mean? He said, go show yourself to the priest. And when they did, they were healed. But the thing is, is he said that only one came back and fell at his feet and thanked him and cried out, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, weren't there ten of you? And yet only one come back? Where's the other nine? You with me? After all that God's done for our lives, we can't afford to be like them nine. Just be the one. Be the one. Be the one that's so grateful. You're so thankful for what God has done in your life. And you never it never gets old. You never get tired of it. You know what I mean? Somebody was telling me the other day they were a, a drug addict. They were on pills, you know, all this stuff. And how God set them free. And the church they were in didn't want to hear it. They said, man, you know, we don't want to hear that stuff no more. And the, the, the funny thing was is that they had a bunch of pill heads in their, in their church. Huh? Your testimony's old. You, you, you overused it. Huh? Man, my, I, my, I can tell my testimony. As a matter of fact, coming in November, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it like every, every year in November around, the, around Thanksgiving time where I'm going to just share my testimony. And you're going to invite your families and hopefully they're going to get saved. But, but you know what I mean? Uh, uh, um, I even forgot what I was saying. Anyway, why don't you stand with me tonight? Your testimony never should ever get old.
I'm thankful for what he did almost 30 years ago. Thank you, you with me? And if I gotta, if I can't think of anything else, I should come and think about what he did for me, bro. You with me? If, if every, my, my life ain't going good, you know, I mean, anything else, and you know, I haven't got money and all this stuff, I just come and think about what he's done for me. That's enough to set me on fire right there. You don't need all that other stuff. That's just temporal stuff. You with me? Your, your name's written in that book. And that ought to be thankful, you know what I mean? Enough to give you thanks to the Lord. He says in, in the Psalms over and over and over, for the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. His mercy is new every morning. Could you imagine that? Try it. Huh? His mercy, his, his mercy is new every morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You with me? That's Amen. heavy duty. Yes. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you tonight. Father, we love you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, we thank you tonight, Father, for your mercy, Lord. For your mercy, God. When we think about what we do deserve, my goodness. And, Father, where we should be tonight, and the condition we should be in, maybe maybe six feet under, God. Father, some of us should be over there at the Roselawn Cemetery, Imperial Garden Cemetery. Father, some in prison, Lord God, some full of AIDS. Father, Lord God, but you're merciful. You brought us out of our Egypt, God, out of bondage. And you had mercy on us, Father. When we didn't deserve it, what we deserved is how, Lord, and you sent your son on that cross to pay that penalty for us. Oh, Father, we're so grateful tonight, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you, God. We can't ever repay you, Lord, but our thanksgiving is all you want, Lord.